Hello friends of Surge Modular and Analog Synthesis. The theme of this video is doing ratcheting on the Surge TKB sequencer. And it's all plugged up and ready to go, so I'll demonstrate it a little bit and then I'll explain how it's been patched. I'm going to stick my finger on the last pad of the 16, and turn up the sound, and then when I let it go I should get some ratcheting going on. With a bass drum, a kick drum, uh, being controlled by the pots on row A of the sequencer. So I'm controlling the, the ratcheting with row C and D. And row C uh, determines whether the ratchet is on for that particular beat. And row D uh, determines how many of these little beats are included in the ratchet on that particular stage of the sequencer. So, if I were to quickly put it uh, uh, res to reset over one uh, stage of the sequence, so we can hear that there's one uh, kick beat on this stage of the sequencer and there's also one beat in the ratchet and if I turn up the row D part I should get more more ratchet beats turn it up the long way, I'm just getting basically a buzz. Okay, so that's, um, that's how we tune this ratchet beat for the number of beats. And at the moment I've got ratchets on uh, stage 1 and stage 8 and 9 and stage 13 of the sequence. Um, these are just arbitrary things for uh, showing how this works. Um, the beat is quite important, the basic um, uh, drum beat, or the kick drum beat is important for me to keep a track of what beat beats I'm listening to. But I can add, for example, on the kick drum I can add an extra beat if I want, by just turning up the appropriate pot. Okay, so let's just turn it down a bit and um, and talk about how it's patched up. To do this, I've uh, created a clock which is um, a fast-running clock that is 12 times faster than the clock that's running the sequencer, uh, and I've set that up on an LFO. And then I've divided it down by 12 using the divide by ncom uh, comparator module. And I've passed the output of the comparator module, the divide by out, into the clock of the sequencer. So now I've got two clocks, one running 12 times faster than the other. And um, this enables me to divide down the 12 into... Uh, numbers smaller than 12, so um, uh, of course the maximum will be getting 12, 12 beats on each one of these st stages of the sequencer. Um, the way it's patched it is to, to use, apart from the divide by NCOM, is to use a universal slow generator to decide whether uh, the uh, ratchet is on for that beat and how many little beats are in within within that ratchet sound. So uh, the way that's done is um, there's uh, an output going from the end output of the universal slope generator to my drum machine module which is Pico drums here. Both the uh, 
The kick drum and, uh, and the ratchet sound is coming from a Pico drum module. And then I have a trigger coming from the fast running clock going into the trigger input. So this is the 12 times faster clock is going to the trigger input of the universal slope generator. I've got two other connections. They both come from the rows. So I've got a connection from row C, which is going into the in uh, input of the universal slope generator. And what this does is that when the uh, part on that particular stage is at minimum, uh, then it allows uh, the ratchet ratcheting to take place and allows end uh, triggers to come out of this module. But when it's turned fully right, then it basically um, uh, forces the uh, universal slope generator to be on permanently and it won't uh, produce any end triggers out. So this uh, part on row C is working in inversion as it were. It's uh, it produces the ratcheting when it's off and it stops the ratcheting when it's on. If you can get used to that kind of slight uh, inversion of, of what you might expect, then there's no problem here. Uh, so, um, let me show what happens if I uh, put the ratchet on again. Um, basically, the when, when the ratchet beat is set to minimum, then I've set the rise time on the universal slope generator to produce only one ratchet beat on that particular stage. So that has to be set to the, the minimum number of beats you want on that ratchet. And then I have the control coming from row D going to the uh, attenuverter which is turned to the plus side and it's uh, approximately two o'clock and uh, I've set there the maximum number of beats I want when I uh, turn this up to full so um, when I turn it to full I'll get a, beat, a buzzing beat on this first stage of the sequence so those are the settings there's no cycling uh, there's no cycle uh, 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 switch in place on the USG and the uh, feedback switches on the uh, voltage control are in neutral positions. So this isn't actually oscillating of its own accord, it's passing through the um, clock beats from the uh, very fast running clock. But it's limiting the number of them uh, to a certain number because of the the uh, fall time is at maximum and the uh, rise time is at a certain position where it will reduce the number of of these beats that are going through. Uh, so that's basically how it's done. And um, what we could do uh, just for a moment is to talk a little bit about. Uh, doing beats in general using the uh, using the sequencer because uh, there are obvious limitations in using a sequence like this to control drum beats. Uh, one of them is obviously that there are only uh, 16 stages and uh, so you can do 16 or some lesser amount, for example 12, to do a kind of triplet based beat. Uh, but you can't go into more uh, kind of definition over over the one bar time period. And there are other limitations too. For example, if we just disconnect the uh, just disconnect the uh, disconnect the ratcheting for a second. Okay, and um, we just look at this uh, kick drum. 
that you see that there are some other problems with using this because if you try and put consecutive beats onto this 16 uh, bit pattern if you have if you try to put two consecutive um, uh, stages up you don't get an extra beat because these two uh, pots are up and the uh, voltage remains high over the sp span of these two beats so basically you you are only kind of lengthening this beat but of course it's you're triggering a sample so you're not going to get another trigger in between so basically you can only use every second uh, stage on the sequencer except uh, that obviously that's not quite true because what we did with the uh, ratchet was that we managed to set up separate ratchets on each beat so uh, there is a method and you can basically use that same method uh, in another USG to um, create beats on every stage but um, the problem then is that um, you might end up with a clock which is running a fast clock which is running uh, which never switches off when you actually stop the sequence and you'd like to be able to stop the sequence so um, the solution to that problem and we can do it quickly now with them um, with the uh, I'll just turn it down for a second and repatch it is that we can use the um, the end com for a different function which is as a as a an AND gate. I've removed the patch with the ratcheting in order to show you uh, how you can get around this problem of not being able to have consecutive beats uh, on different stages of the sequencer. So um, you can you can get around this by using an AND gate or making an AND gate out of, out of a comparator and there's uh, something about that in my video on this channel making logic gates out of comparators. In this particular case, I've done it with the divide by n comparator, and I've got it patched up so that um, uh, the I have a clock coming from the universal slope generator uh, running in cycle, and it's v quite important with this comparator thing to to use um, a unipolar uh, clock output because if you have a bipolar clock output, you could end up with some problems. So I'm using that as a clock and it's going into the minus input of this comparator and then I've got the output of the row from the sequencer going into the plus input of the comparator the knobs are at 12 o'clock so they're not doing anything and I've got um, the same thing that's coming from the from the uh, clock I've got going into clock the sequencer so the output of the sequencer row is being anded in this comparator with the clock coming from the USG and it sounds like this. So I've got, uh, as you can hear, I've got a lot of consecutive beats running on this uh, row D of the sequencer here. And it's no problem to have two or three or more consecutive beats running in, in the sequence. So it can be done this way and that gives you the full possibility of using all 16 steps. So this is just a thought uh, on how to do uh, beats with uh, ratcheting beats and other kind of beats using the full 16 steps of the sequencer. So happy synthing!